video. Thank you so much for being here. This video is inspired by a conversation, comment, reply, back and forth with Renate Cormick. Under the video that I put out recently on how is it growing, referring to Dendrobium nobili. So we have the subject back into our viewfinder for reasons, because Renata not only in her comment pointed something out to me, but also asked me a question with regards to how to get the best results out of propagating a Dendrobium nobili by using the canes. So we had a little bit of back and forth, but I thought this could be of possible interest to anybody else. Any Dendrobiums with a cane are easily propagated if we remove old canes from the mother plant, put them on sphagnum moss or any other kind of water retentive media, keep that well hydrated and eventually out of the nodes we should get some keikis as that is part and parcel of how dendrobiums propagate themselves. We can take advantage of that especially when our dendrobium is abundant. So apart from the fact that all cane dendrobiums can do this party trick, we're going to stick with the nobly as an example. Now the word old when it comes to to the canes that we want to propagate is all relative because as far as I'm concerned you have new growths coming so of course that determines that is a new cane developing you have canes that are a year old usually in flower by the time you are considering to do some propagation because usually these dendrobiums would start to bloom in spring summer and that would be then their growing season by which the canes would respond much much better to produce keikis if cut off the mother plant. Then you also have canes from yesteryear goodness me, depending on the age of your dendrobium. It could be two years old, three years old. In my case these canes you see back here are the oldest canes they are four years old. So when people say cut off the old canes and use those to propagate, we immediately jump to the conclusion that the old canes would mean the oldest canes on the plant. Besides, they are not really that pretty anymore and we could actually kill two birds with one stone, make the orchid look nicer, use the leafless canes for our propagation, job done. But there's always a but. The risk with using the oldest canes of any kind of dendrobium that you want to propagate is relatively high. The result of getting any keikis out of those canes will probably be much, much more difficult if not fail because the cells of the oldest canes are weak. They've been used up. They've been needed for many years. They've been serving as storage organs. And more often than not, when we get a dendrobium into our collection, it is the these storage organs that are affected the most because while the orchid acclimates and finds the energy to produce new growths and new roots, these storage organs can sometimes deplete themselves to the point of shriveling and then they plump up again once new growths, new roots take over with the hydration process. So what do we got? tired cells which also do not have all the enzymes and the hormones left in them because literally their only job now is to be storage organs. The whole attention and focus when it comes to growth or blooming is concentrated on newer canes because all the hormones and enzymes gather there and start the whole process over again leaving the back canes as their backup plan and as storage. So the oldest canes of your dendrobiums are not good candidates for propagation because none of these hormones or enzymes are focused in that area. So I would say if you want to propagate your dendrobiums at any point in time and you want to use the mother plant and the canes if you're not getting any more keikis, I highly recommend that you take a cane that is a year old the one, for example, that is currently blooming in the season. And I know that sounds really harsh because now that you've got yourself a beautiful cane in bloom and it is still a nice looking cane, you are probably reluctant to cut it off. However, maybe this will convince you that it's going to be okay. Because even though I'm not going to do this on camera right now, here's what I recommend you do. You take the youngest, maturest cane that a dendrobium has. Let it bloom out, enjoy the blooms and the gorgeous fragrance. But what you do when you cut it is you go down and really make sure that you don't cut all the way down to the base, but leave it maybe the first node or the second node of the cane 
leave that and then cut above those nodes. If the bloom would let me show you, I hope you can see that. So you cut a little bit higher, you will get the cane a little bit shorter, but what you're going to do in this case is guarantee that the roots of the cane that you've cut will stay viable, which is great because everything's connected by a rhizome at the bottom. And on top of that, you will trigger a new growth to come out one of the two nodes that are below the cut. And that growth is then going to be close enough to the media to send out roots into the media, which is another support system for the orchid. And the new growth within one year will fill in the space of the cane that you've cut off. So you only have pretty much one season where there is a little bit of a gaping hole, but you're not losing out completely because you're maintaining the old root system. You're gonna get a new growth on one of the nodes you've left behind. Another root system will then form, and then you're gonna fill in the blank when that new growth fills that space. Next thing is, a lot of people would cut every section or node or every second section or node to be able to propagate all the pieces and get the maximum yield for the keikis to grow out of those pieces. And that can be done. However, I like to err on the side of caution. Less is more. Because if you were to cut every single node, your pieces are small, okay? You don't have much storage or backup for that new keiki, that eye, that will develop to grow and become strong enough, including roots possibly leaf out, while still having the storage part of the cane that you've cut to support that growth. Chances are it gets off to a great start, but the roots are not long enough and you still can't actually pot that keiki up. And the storage organ has been sucked dry, so to speak, of all energy. And suddenly your little keiki collapses because there's nothing left to sustain it. Right. So what I recommend when you get a cane like this, after you've cut it above the two nodes down by the base, is... Either you cut it into three sections or best practice is leave it in one piece, place it on a bed of sphagnum moss or any other highly water retentive media that provides a lot of humidity, place the entire cane on that, lay it down, cover it with cellophane, leave some holes in the cellophane for some aeration, put it into good bright light, not direct sun, that would be too much, but if you have it somewhat semi-dark, then there is no way that cane can produce sugars in order to start growing keikis. So you need a lot of light, no direct sun, and keep it protected, aerated, and mist the cane and the sphagnum moss or the media that you're using just to keep it all nice and damp, keep it covered. The whole cane has a lot more potential of supporting any of the keikis it chooses to grow. I know this sounds weird, but I'm gonna consider this like the orchid knows what it is capable of based on how much substance it has to work with. So let's just pretend the orchid has senses. The cane will sense how much energy it has in it to produce as many keikis as it can handle so that the keikis can mature, get big enough, secure the survival of the species, so to speak, based on what the storage is available for those keikis. The same would happen if you were to cut the cane into several pieces. There will only be one new keiki per piece because that is all the orchid can support. And then up to a certain point, is the piece going to have enough energy to grow big enough for you to pot on. So please take in consideration that your keikis will probably take six to eight months from the moment that you see a nubbin to develop to the point where you can twist them off and pot them up. Six to eight months is a long time during the growing period where most of us are dealing with warm temperatures and anything that desiccates very, very quickly will not be able to support any kind of maturing development for a keiki. Keeping a cane completely intact gives you a much better buffer and time frame for any keiki that the cane wants to cultivate, produce, so that it can survive. The whole cane has a lot more backup if left in one piece as opposed to 
chopping it into pieces. It works for the commercial growers really, really well. They take their canes, they chop them up into pieces, and once they start to get little eyes, nubbins, and roots, they stick them in the pots, and then three years later, we find those propagated ones on our shelves. But they have perfect conditions. They have perfect light, perfect humidity, and everything works just perfectly for them. I would say that 80% of us who want to propagate our dendrobiums do not have these exact conditions, but we will get results if we go down the safer route as opposed to thinking that we can max out our propagation by chopping a cane into pieces. I thought this was such an interesting comment and little dialogue Renata Cormick and I had. I figured I might as well make a video out of it in case anybody thinks, well, I can do this and then uses the very old canes in the back trying to tidy up the orchid at the same time and then it fails. Fresh cane, all the hormones and enzymes are still accumulated in here. Finished blooming, cut it off, leave the nodes on at the bottom, let a new growth grow, fill in the space, keep that cane in one piece, Put it on sphagnum moss, keep it nice and misted and humid, allow for some airflow and watch the magic happen with cane dendrobiums. One day, that is exactly what I'm going to do. Today is not the day, <laughs> but I don't want you waiting for whenever I am ready to pull the trigger to then propagate my dendrobium nobly hybrid. But anyway, I hope that this was of interest to you as much as I thought it was an interesting dialogue between Renata Cormick and I. And I really appreciate your time watching. Thank you so very, very much. Happy propagating if you're a greedy orchid grower like me. The more, the merrier. But let's keep them safe, let's get them to grow on, and let's be able to pot them up without them collapsing before we even have the opportunity to do so. Have yourselves a beautiful day, everybody. On one condition, though, that you do stay safe. Take care. Bye. Bye.